Well, good morning. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor here at Walden Community Church. And before we start today's sermon, I just want to remind everyone that we are open. We are open. We are fully open. If you come by for Sunday morning worship or for any of our programs, it's going to feel exactly like you always remembered. On Sunday, we have two services at 930 and 11. Our 930 service is with our choir and we sing traditional hymns. And our 11 o'clock service is with our contemporary worship band. If you come at 11, we also have a child care program that goes all the way through high school. And in between our two services, we have coffee and donuts. On Mondays, we have a prayer group that meets at 930 and we pray for the concerns of our church and we also have coffee. On Wednesdays at 430, we have an adult Bible study class that meets and you're fully welcome to come to that. Anyone and everyone is welcome. And afterwards, they go out for dinner. On Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m., we have youth group. That's for all uh, the children, uh, all the youth group that is in the ages of middle school through high school. And then on Thursday mornings, we have a men's Bible study. And so if you have any questions about any of those programs, we highly recommend that you email our church office at office at waldenchurch.com, or you can call us or just swing by on our office hours from nine to three, Monday through Friday. And so uh, last Sunday, it might have appeared like I was complaining. At the beginning, I was talking about how people had not yet returned to church. And I admit, it is uh, a worry of mine. It does keep me up at night. We lost a lot of great people uh, these past two years, many of whom I would consider very close friends. But the truth is, I shouldn't complain. In fact, I really have no reason to complain, none. So today, as we talk about living a life that matters, I wanna give us all a few reminders that we really need to stop complaining. There are plenty of reasons not to complain. And you might be thinking, all right, Pastor David, I know the first one, because God told us not to. Well, yeah, God did tell us not to, and that should be enough. God is the authority, the Bible, is the authority, and that alone should be enough for us all. But we need to say a little bit more than that, because I think the whole world has a complaining problem. We all have this attitude of ingratitude. In fact, we all complain so much that we don't even notice that we're doing it, because we all do it. We complain about the weather, we complain about our jobs, we complain about traffic, we complain about lines at the store, we complain about the lack of parking or the cost of gas or immigration or the government or new laws or old laws, and the list goes on and on and on. And do we really feel better after we complain? No, we don't feel any better. We usually feel worse. And so do the people around us. So why are we talking about this? Because complaining is a huge problem, not only in the world today, but also in the church. And because it's in those areas of our life, then it also comes into our home. And if we're going to be God's church, and if we're going to be people that live lives that matter, all of this complaining has to stop. In our time together, we have been walking through the book of Philippians, and our author is Paul who at the time of this writing, he is in prison by not only the biggest military force ever, but also by one of the most cruel and vicious world leaders to have ever lived. And not once does Paul ever complain about his circumstances. In fact, it's exactly the opposite. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 14, he says, Do all things without grumbling or disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent children of God, without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain, even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you also should be glad and rejoice with me. You know, this was written... 2,000 years ago. And I think we always look back on history and we always talk about the good old days. You know, the world that we're living in now is getting a lot worse. 
The times are a-changing, and everything's getting worse, and I don't envy the kids that are growing up in this generation, because back in my day, Paul writes this 2,000 years ago, and he says that back then, the world is crooked and twisted. There's no such thing as the good old days. The world is dark and evil and broken now, just like it was 2,000 years ago. But we're really not here to talk about the world. We're here to talk about us. This isn't meant to be a comparison. The truth is there should be no comparison. Paul says there should be no comparison and no similarities. The world is crooked and twisted, and you are called to be different. How do you start? Verse 14 says, do all things without grumbling or disputing. (laughs) Wow. Can we even do that? Well, the Bible said it, so I hope we can. We probably can, right? Could you do the no complaining challenge? Go 24 hours without complaining. That means not even about yourself. No complaining, even in your thoughts. Could you go 24 hours? We should be able to because it's a command in Scripture. And as a church, as those who represent Christ, we should be obeying. Last week, we talked about obeying and submitting to God's authority and how difficult that is. It's a reason that people don't like going to church. The church is always telling me how to live, and I don't like that. God is always telling me what to do, and I don't like that. I hear you. We don't like being told to do, especially Texans. Oh, you... You can't tell a Texan what to do. You know, the rule is that the state flag should fly slightly lower than the American flag. Don't tell that to a Texan. But you know what? Jesus had every right to count himself equal with God. He was God, and Paul reminds us that even Jesus obeyed. Further up in verse 6, He says, Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Even Jesus was obedient. Even Jesus submitted. Jesus went to the cross without grumbling or complaining. And Paul says to us, now you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling and do it without complaining. Can we? I wonder. Because, oh my goodness, everyone complains now. So much so. I hear more complaining now than ever before. We complain about so much. We complain, we question, we second guess everything. We're suspicious, we're finding conspiracy. 90% of Facebook and Twitter is just people complaining. Listen to what Jesus says about this in Luke chapter six. The good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. In other words, we say, right? The words that come out of our mouth are a reflection of the things that are in our heart. So when we are complaining, and when we are whining, and when we are grumbling, or as Texans would say, when you're throwing a hissy fit, Those actions are rooted in an attitude of ingratitude. Now, Joanna and I, we have two boys. We have a 13-year-old and an 8-year-old, and we both work. So it should not be uncommon for us to order a pizza (laughs) once a week and have it be delivered. Now, imagine your surprise after going to the door to get your pizza. He rings the door, and there's the pizza guy, uh, and he's holding the pizza, but it's not in a box. It's just in his hand. And I mean, the cheese is oozing out all over the place and the grease is running down his elbow and you assume his hands are underneath there and you'd hope he's wearing gloves, but he's not wearing gloves. What is this? You exclaim. Oh, we're out of pizza boxes, the driver says. 
I mean, well, who cares, right? After all, you didn't order a box, you ordered a pizza, and so here it is, here's your pizza. Are you happy, or are you gonna complain? Of course you're gonna complain. Yeah, but you didn't order a box. But you expected one. You, you can't eat that, you don't know where this guy's hands have been. Okay, but it's, it's only a 37 cent box. It's made out of cardboard, why are you upset? It's not valuable. Sure, but that 37 cent box plays a very valuable role. You see, that 37 cent box is protecting that beautiful pizza. Now, we might not think the 37 cent box is important because it's the pizza that's important, but in truth, the pizza gives that 37 cent box value. With that beautiful, delicious pizza inside, now the box becomes valuable. Well, guess what? I am a 37 cent cardboard box because what's inside of me? Galatians says, I have been crucified with Christ and it's no longer I who live, but who? Christ who lives in me. Guess what? This life, this life that we live, it's not about you and me. We are just 37 cent cardboard boxes and we are called to shine and to be an example for lost people. Paul says, do all things without grumbling or disputing that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Translation, quit whining and start shining. Let me ask you, and just be honest, okay? Since you started complaining about things, has the world gotten better? Do you remember when you were a child and you hated green beans or broccoli? How many of you still hate green beans? Well, when you were a child and you had to eat whatever it was that was on your plate, broccoli, peas, did you have to eat it? Yep, you did. I had to clean my plate or no dessert. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We, we didn't have dessert. It was, I had to clean my plate or else, right? Now, did it make a difference if I said, Mom, I hate green beans, they're so gross. Did it ever make a difference if I told my Aunt Joan that I hated clam chowder or that I hated roast duck? No. It didn't make a difference. Nobody ever said, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, honey. I forgot that you hate chickpeas. Have a brownie instead. Never happened. Well, just like complaining about broccoli when you were a kid, and that didn't get you anywhere, complaining about something today, that won't get you anywhere either. New boss at work, new rules at work. Does complaining around the water cooler help? Nope. I mean, sure, the Bible says do all things without grumbling or disputing, but another good reason not to do it, it's pointless. Has all of your complaining and grumbling ever changed somebody else's mind? They now see things totally different because you sent them an email or a Facebook post. No, oh, of course not. So really, complaining is pointless. It's a waste of breath. It's a corruption of words. Not to mention that it only divides us all more. And it will not advance the kingdom of God one single inch. In Matthew chapter 20, Jesus tells a parable. He says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. And after agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, he said, you go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others still standing. He said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, 
Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree for, with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to these last workers as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? Let me ask you something. When the workers who came in early at 6 a.m. complained to the owner, did that get them more money? When the 6 a.m. workers complained to the owner, were they treated better? Did their complaining get them anywhere? No, it didn't. And it won't with you. Complaining is displeasing to the heart of God because it's a statement of discontent about your life. Numbers 11 says the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about their misfortunes. And when the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled and the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some outlying parts of the camp. And these people were living on the run. They were living in a hot desert, in tents, eating the same food every single day for, and walking right? Walking for hours, days, weeks. Their lives were harder and worse than yours. And when they complained, it made God so angry that his anger manifested as fire and it started burning random things. I don't know what it is for each of us. I mean, we were all raised a little differently. I mean, we've all had different life experiences. We've all had different outlooks, but we need to fix this. Today is the day to fix this, and we need to give it back to God. You and I must resist this temptation to look for all the negatives in life. James 1 says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. Paul says, do all things without grumbling or disputing that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in their midst. Why should we not complain? So that we are blameless and innocent, and what else? Seen as children of God. That means when everyone else is complaining about the economy, we're saying, meh, it's only money. That means when other people around us are complaining about the direction where things are going, we say, meh, I'm not worried. I know God has a plan. That means when other people are complaining about the government, we're saying, meh, you know what? God's my authority, and I answer to a higher power. You all do what you want. I mean, think about it. Who would you rather hang out with more? People who never complain or people who always complain? Verse 14 says, Do all things without grumbling or disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation. Paul says there's already a complaining world out there. And he says they're crooked and twisted, but not us. When everybody else is complaining, we are supposed to be filled with joy. Colossians 2 says, See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of this world, and not according to Christ. The only thing that should be taking you captive, the only thing that should be taking your mind captive and you, that your thoughts are thinking about is Jesus. Complaining is a sign of worry and stress and dissatisfaction with life. And Paul says, you shouldn't be complaining if you are living according to Christ. Me? I don't have anything to complain about. I know what I deserve. I deserve to stand before God and to be judged by my sin. The wages of sin is death, so I deserve hell. 
That same God who judges the world, he also sent his son to die for the world. And now I am saved. And now I am forgiven. And this world, psh, it's all temporary. It's all temporary. So you know what? Cancer or no, death or no, if this or that changes, the world changes, new laws are passed, new people are elected, who cares? Who cares? Romans says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may be bound in hope. Psalm says, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Proverbs, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. We're talking about living lives that matter, a living, a life that matters. And Paul says, be different. He says, stand out. When everyone else is complaining, you be joy filled in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. This book, the Bible, it'll never tell you to keep your head down. It'll never tell you to go through life unnoticed. Paul says, be a light. Be a light in this crooked and twisted generation. It's a really easy test to take. Before we post that update, before we send that email, before we pull that person aside at the water cooler, before we get into that argument with our son or daughter, ask ourselves: is this me grumbling and disputing or am I being a light to the world? Because we're called to be a light. We're called to be in this world, yes, but not of it. We are called to live different lives, a life that matters a life of light. Paul gives us three reasons not to complain. Let's look at them really fast before we go. Why shouldn't we complain? Because we are children of God. That's the first thing Paul says. Do things without grumbling or complaining so that you appear as blameless, innocent children of God. You are a child of God, so you are different. And the world should see that difference. You see, there, there goes the church again, telling me how to live, telling me that I shouldn't complain. Everybody else complains. I like complaining. If I don't complain, what am I supposed to do? Oh, I don't know. Love one another? Be devoted to one another? Honor one another above yourselves? Live in harmony with one another? Build up one another? Be like-minded towards one another? How about accept one another? Care for one another. Bear one another's burdens. Forgive one another. Be patient with one another. Be kind and compassionate to one another. What do you think? Which way should we conduct ourselves? If we conducted ourselves in this way, which is consistent with God's word, I believe we would truly be seen as children of God and children of light. The bottom line is if you complain, you're not being a very good example. The Bible says to live clean, innocent lives inside of a dark world so that your light shines before them. Brightly before who? Who, who, who are they? Who, who are the people that need to see the light? The people who are living in the dark. The lost, the broken, your family members, your husband, your wife, your children, your friends, your coworkers, your neighbors. How can you shine like a star when your conversations are so full of complaining? How can you be a light for someone who is living in a dark room when you're just complaining every 10 seconds? How can you lead your family or be that example if all you do is complain? You can't. James says, does a spring pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. You can't tell somebody the good news about Christ when everything else you speak is bad. You can't expect your children to learn to be godly and to speak accordingly like they're supposed to when all they hear from mom and dad is complaining. And another reason not to complain is it makes your teachers and pastors proud. Not sure what you hear when you read this, but for me, I hear the heart of a pastor. Your church leaders 
pour themselves into their work, and they don't do it for the big bucks, they don't do it for fancy homes, they don't do it for the weekly accolades, they do this for the precious people that they have been called to shepherd. Listen to Paul's heart when he writes the end of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 1. He says, Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. Paul is proud. He is proud of this congregation. He is proud of this church. He says, holding fast to the word of life so that in the day of Christ, I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. He says, show me that I am not wasting my time. Show me that all of this wasn't just us, just playing church and that you are actually paying attention What does your mom always say? If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. That's the truth. Because whatever comes out of your mouth is going to come back and haunt you. And it's also a reflection of your teachers. It's a reflection of those who raised you. It's a reflection of your pastors. Oh, you talk like that, and they're your parents? oh, you talk like that, and you go to that church? Nice. It's better to say nothing at all than to talk negatively and complain. Speak life, not death. Be an encourager. To who? To everyone. Encourage your children. They need to be encouraged. They need to be told that they're not always wrong. Encourage your wife. Tell her she's beautiful and that she does a good job. Encourage your husband. He needs more encouraging. He needs to know that he's appreciated. Students, your parents need encouraging. Tell them that that you are thankful for all that they do. And thank your teachers before the school year is out. Grumbling and complaining is so much more than just a way of talking. It's an attitude. It's scrutinizing every situation. Instead of searching for the worst things, we should be always encouraging ourselves to have an attitude that looks for the best things. We should be thanking God for every good thing in our life because we truly have nothing to complain about. Change our attitudes. Change our words. If we do that, will change the course of our life and ultimately will change the world. Let's pray together. Lord, I really have nothing to complain about. When I think about all the blessings in my life, all the wonderful things that I have, life and health and family and friends and loved ones, I have nothing to complain about, especially when I consider the cross. Your son went willingly to the cross and he did not grumble or complain. And he did that for me. He gave his life for me. And now I am saved for all eternity. When I deserve death, when I deserve punishment, I was rescued by grace. Lord, I have nothing to complain about. Help me to see every good thing. Help me to see every blessing that I might live according to your word and live a life that will make you proud. Thank you for life. Thank you for grace. Thank you for every good thing. May I stop and smell the roses and see the beauty and enjoy life. May I be joy filled. May I have an attitude of gratitude. And may I stop and thank you and praise you and worship you with every chance I get. Help me to love you more. Help me to love your creation more. Help me to love others more. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for hanging out with us this morning. Uh, Of course, as always, you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening to us on podcast. You can always download this uh, to your cell phone so that you can listen to it 
while you're out and about, or you can just clip and copy the URL up there and post it to your social media wall to let other people know uh, what you listened to this morning, or post it to a friend's wall if you think it might encourage them. As always, we ask that you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and we will see you guys next time. Hopefully, we'll see you back here in church. I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.